So the first time Golden Thread had an office was in 2003 when it was a big decision for us. We committed to a $400 a month rent payment for an office. Um, and it was at Z Space, mm. which back then was on 10th Street, and they had rented the whole floor mm. of a building. Uh, and I think 10 or 12 theater companies were sharing mm. uh, space there. And Golden Thread and Crowded Fire had offices next to each other. That's great. Um, and Aaron Gilly used to work at Crowded Fire back then. As the managing director, yes. yeah. And, uh, and so that's, that. I think that's the beginning of our two companies' history. Well, and it was so incredible because then in a moment about three years ago, we were in a staff meeting and we knew we were looking for a new administrative rehearsal space and you called in the middle of that staff meeting and <laughs> suggested that we, we might come and, and look at this shared space where we are now. And it's been a remarkable journey. I mean, three years, we were just saying that we didn't expect it to feel as rich or vibrant mm -hmm. as it does now. Yeah, and we... Um, it's interesting because there are the theoretical commonalities, <laughs> you know, shared yeah. mission and mm. shared ar ar artists that we have. And then there are those things that we discover in actually occupying the space together mm. and being and working in proximity to each other. Um, the partnership uh, model, the, the opportunity that we found with La Piana, for example, to really talk about and formalize our partnership mm -hmm. and really talk about those three wins mm -hmm. uh, and how to communicate the three wins. Um, and, and the c idea of co-production mm -hmm. really came out of those conversations, right? And it's something that we were looking yeah. for a way to also artistically partner with each other. Yeah, very much so. I mean, um, what naturally started to happen when living together as roommates was that we shared advice. Um, we sort of overheard things that were happening and then we, you know, came up with ideas of how we might work together um, in different types of ways. And even our boards and our resident artist communities met together, which was fantastic. And the co-production as one of those opportunities to work together, then we actually also also have a shared position, an operations associate who just started about two months ago. Um, and then we're really looking to develop artists, our artists, our resident artists companies um, together in a more um, combined and coordinated way. And I think the co-production has been fantastic because, you know, I don't, well, of course, we're the two artistic directors, so just getting to be in it's the a room together. Way. It's <laughs> the best thing ever. Yes. And both sort of um, be circling around the work and having opinions about the work and really thinking about um, how to bring the teams together, um, both in you know the artistic joys of the friction of it and also in sort of the lifting up of it has been really meaningful. Yeah, and I think the, the foundation of this successful partnership is really the respect that both companies have for each yeah. other and the shared mission. I mean, our mission is very specifically about the Middle East, but Crowded Fire for so many years has been working to lift up the um, voices that are underrepresented in American theater mm -hmm. and, and the attention that you pay to that process mm -hmm. um, has been really inspiring and, and it's been wonderful to watch you and your team in, mm -hmm. in action uh, with Matchbox Reading for mm -hmm. On the Periphery um, and, and really be able to provide our artists with the resources of both companies, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's been really inspirational and something that I really look forward to continuing with the actual production. Yeah, I mean, I agree 100%. It's something else, um, you know, we talk often about the optics of inclusion and equity, and I think both of our organizations and the way our staff really operate and think on a day-to-day -day basis is how do we listen and engage in the fabric of our organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and that that is also true of when we're producing. You know, mm -hmm. it's about really what is the best idea? How are we serving the story? How are we serving the artists? And ultimately our communities who are our audiences. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I, I'm especially excited about this piece also because of its innovation and um, its intrepid 
sort of magical qualities yes. um, that are surrounding the questions of migration and what home is, because so often um, those things are living in a different type of seriousness or earnestness. And I think this has a different type of um, experimental quality that mm -hmm. also feels true to Crowded Fire, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. I love. Yeah. Yeah, the experimental aesthetic of the piece and then the, the, s the centering home and hope, yeah. uh, which for, uh, I would say, an immigrant uh, like myself and the folks that are working uh, on the play, it's, you know, this idea of home is so, I don't know, it's intangible, mm -hmm. right? It's like, what is home? You, you never really fully are at home anywhere. Yeah. Um, and and I it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to sort of share that um, concept with uh, a broader community and a, a community that Golden Thread may not necessarily have access to. Mm. Um, and also, um, when, you, when we talk about equity mm. and inclusion, I think there is, you know, there a, a lot of people talk about equity and inclusion. <laughs> I think Crowded Fire and Golden Thread are two organizations that embody it, yeah. right? In our staffing, in our artistic work, in our audience development. On our boards. On our boards. <laughs> and I think that's something that I'm extremely oh. proud of and Me really, uh, again, look forward to by the two companies coming yeah. together, really putting that forward and celebrating it together. Yes. Good times.